Hey everybody, welcome back to the Joe Rockstar channel and my very first product review besides the 100 hour review I did on the KTM. I'd like to talk about helmets. Now if you're anything like I am, you're working on a budget and you're trying to go cheap. And I've done that for quite a while now. So I've been looking for a helmet and I decided I, want, I don't want to go with the cheap helmet solutions. If I keep doing that, I'm just going to keep pouring money into a helmet. So I decided to take a closer look at a helmet that I discovered while I was doing my research. It has some amazing features that I'd like to point out and share with you all. Starting with my first helmet from some of my earlier videos, uh, I believe the helmet costs around $80. Uh, it was a Cyber and I'm not really sure what kind of protection features it had. All I knew was that I needed a helmet and I bought it. After a while, I started to lose weight. As some of you know, I was 230 pounds when I bought my first bike. And after a while, the weight started coming off and the fat in my cheeks started to go down. So that original helmet that I bought, which was a large, no longer fit me. It would just flop down in front of my face. So I went out and bought another helmet. Uh, which you could see in my what the hell are you wearing video that I put out a few years ago. But those two helmets that I started out with were both uh, the Enduro or Adventure helmet. Uh, this one you might recognize from the Kirkland race. I wore it also at Sam Manuel and I wore it for most of the off season. All right, at this point, these are all three sub $100 helmets that weren't really the best option for safety. But of course, I like to operate on a budget. Rocky Mountain ATV had a closeout on older model helmets. One of them being the Fox V3 Shiv that I'm holding right here. This is the helmet that I've been wearing during most of my riding for the last year. When I got this helmet, I thought, wow, this is a really good helmet. It's lighter than the other helmets. It's got a nice big wide opening here in the front that let me fit my goggles on and the goggles did not touch any of the helmet. They fit nice and flush right up against my face. But actually, it is a very comfortable helmet for uh, the price. I think normally these were, when they were being sold brand new, were in the $400 range. Uh, but I got it at a pretty big discount because it was in a year old model. This helmet does have some serious flaws to it. The visor is connected by three almost paper thin pieces of plastic that are supposed to hold this on. Uh, let me tell you, if you sneeze hard enough, this visor is going to break. I've broken this visor three times. The first two times I was able to find a replacement visor online. This visor broke right here. This one is actually broken. Uh, I could not find a replacement. There are no more replacement visors for this helmet. They don't make it anymore. And then just SOL. Desperate for a solution, I went ahead and put two quarter inch screws through the visor into the helmet shell. And some of you are probably like, you did what? That's crazy. It was desperation. I needed this helmet fixed. I do understand that I probably compromised the integrity of the shell and this helmet is not as safe as it used to be. So that's one major flaw with this thing. The other isn't really so much a major flaw as much as a serious cosmetic flaw. Fox likes to put these little fox ears on the back of the helmet. Well, they come off pretty easy. Pretty sure I just hit a branch or something. They're glued on and it just snapped off and it disappeared and it's gone. And they don't make a replacement one for that either. Come on, Fox, really? You can do better than this. So I decided to take a closer look at a helmet that I discovered while I was doing my research. It has some amazing features that I'd like to point out and share with you all. So this is the Liat 6.5 GPX Carbon version 16. This is the newest helmet from Liat's carbon line. Uh, obviously it's made of carbon fiber and so it is very, 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 very light. Um, I'll probably say that a hundred times uh, during this video because it's amazing how light this helmet is. Before I point out some of the wonderful features of this helmet, besides the fact that it's light, which we already got to, I need to talk about what makes this helmet bad. You know what makes this helmet bad? The price tag. At $600, this helmet is almost as expensive as all five previous helmets that I've bought combined. However, what you get for your money is pretty damn cool. Let's take a look at some of these features. First off, the weight. This helmet is light. I'm telling you, this thing feels like 
uh, almost like you're wearing nothing on your head. I mean, other than the pressure you get from the cheek pads, and obviously you know you're wearing a helmet, it feels like you're wearing a, a hat or something. It's so light. Um, I can put a GoPro on the front of this helmet, and I can put my Sony action cam on the side, just like I do with my other helmet. And with both of those cameras on it, it'll probably feel like I'm wearing the Fox V3 with no cameras at all. This helmet is extremely light. One other thing that's pretty awesome about it. I mean, look at it compared to the Fox. Same size helmet. This is a medium. This is a medium. And by the way, it fits true to size. I wear a medium. It fits the same. I mean, look at the difference in size. This isn't just a cosmetic thing that they decided to do by making it skinny. This actually is part of the safety features, which seems kind of odd. And by designing a shell that's 10% smaller, they've actually reduced the impact to the head and the brain that you get from those rotational forces by 20% over the average or normal helmet. And you know I'm gonna love this. The visor is actually connected on there pretty damn good. However, it's not so good that it's gonna cause you a problem in a crash. Now I realize that all visors should come off when you crash and I shouldn't be complaining about my visor breaking, but I'm telling you, you sneeze on that other visor, it comes off. This one, it's sturdy, it's gonna stay on, but if you have an accident with some reasonable amount of force is gonna knock this visor off, and these screws on the sides and up here in the front are going to shear off. Once they shear off, you'll be left with the threaded stud of the screw still inside the helmet, and they actually supply you with replacement screws that have a tool on them to remove the broken studs that are still inside the helmet. So you'll be able to remove those, put your visor back on, tighten it right back down again. Now, the visor itself, if it does need to be replaced, it's a little pricey. The visor, just the visor is $60. Twice the price as the Fox V3 uh, to replace the visor. But it doesn't look like I will be needing to replace this visor unless I have a serious accident. Next, we'll talk about this little logo on the side that says 360 degree turbine technology. Look, I don't buy into that kind of stuff. I like the helmet, but I don't like the marketing. There's nothing turbine about it. These are little rubber discs, and I hate to say rubber. They're made out of some kind of special material. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it's called, which squishes, the faster it squishes, the harder it gets. So it starts out kind of slow, like your, like your suspension on your motorcycle. As it compresses, it gets tighter and tighter. It also moves around in a circle. So the idea is kind of like the MIPS system for, uh, for the Fox V3. Uh, the helmet will actually be able to move around on your head, you know, without causing your head to twist. It's gonna transfer less force. So now we've got less force being transferred because of the size of it. And then we have these little discs all through the helmet underneath the liner that are going to protect you from the rotational force. Supposedly it reduces up to 30% of head impact at concussion level and reduces up to 40% of the rotational acceleration to the head and the brain. So two features right there. We've got the size, we've got the 360 turbine technology. In addition to that, we also have a special type of foam underneath the liner here, right, which is called V-foam. The V-foam is actually a multi-density V-shaped impact foam that's molded to the outer shell and it significantly reduces G-forces transferred to the head and brain. Increased absorption, slimmer and stiffer structure than normal foam. So that multi-density V-shaped impact foam is molded to the outer shell and significantly reduces G-forces that are transferred to the head and the brain. It also has increased absorption, it's slimmer, and gives a stiffer structure which allowed them to make this helmet so, so much smaller. Other helmets have to pack in more material which actually causes their helmets to be larger. So with less material you're getting the same amount of safety out of this helmet. So of course Liat is well known for their neck braces and this helmet is designed to go hand in hand with that neck brace. Now let's talk about the ventilation. This helmet has crazy ventilation. All right, starting out in the front, you've got some vents right here. You've got vent, obviously the, the vent in the front. You've got vents up here above the brow. All of that brings air in through all of these little channels that run inside the helmet. And most helmet designers have that same thing. But what this helmet has, it's a little bit different, are these huge exhaust vents, okay? So you have air flowing over the, these exhaust vents at speed, either through the inside or the outside creating a low pressure area outside the helmet, which is going to actually suck the air out of the helmet. So all of that hot air that's trapped inside your helmet is going to be sucked right out. So unlike some helmets, some of you are probably thinking, 
Oh yeah, they have vents all over them, but they're always covered up by the foam inside. The foam is actually cut away where these vents are. These vents go directly into the helmet. And you might be thinking, well, oh, that's kind of dangerous. But these honeycomb uh, grills that are on here are actually uh, tested by dropping a very sharp spike from, from uh, several feet down onto them, and they're unable to penetrate. So in addition to the ventilation, this helmet also has something else that's gonna help you with that endurance factor when you're riding long rides. It has a channel for your Camelback's SIP tube to be channeled through right into the helmet. No need to drill a hole in the front or do some type of modification. It is built to take a hydration pack. Now, of course, the bike valve might be at an angle and Liat's addressed that problem too. They, they sell a 90 degree uh, valve that you can buy to put in there. However, we got another bad thing to mention. I've looked everywhere and nobody has one in stock. So Liat, get on the ball and, and uh, get some more of those out there so we can, we can get them for the helmets. So that points out some of the most uh, awesome features of this helmet. Again, the big drawback is the price, okay? Uh, it's just a really expensive helmet. Um, it's little brother, the 5.5 GPX version 1.5, sells for about $150 less and only weighs two ounces more. So I think that's a good option for those people who are not willing to go out and spend the money on a helmet like this. So there are some challenges for some of you vloggers out there who are using the Sony action cams. Uh, I used Everride's design to attach the camera to the side here so that we don't take up any of the video real estate with the helmet itself. But as you've seen in a, in a couple of races here now, I think it's uh, three times a helmet has come off and uh, that is no longer a viable option because this is a loner. I won't be using that helmet. This is in addition to what uh, Everide does. I drilled a hole through the aluminum bar. I used some paracord uh, tied through the hole and around the camera. If this does get knocked off in the race, I'm not gonna lose the camera. Of course, my shot's gonna be ruined, but I won't lose the camera. Um, I, I might be able to reach up there and snap it back on in a pinch if I need to and, and still get some decent footage. Um, in addition to that, I'm gonna go ahead and mount the GoPro uh, to the chin bar. So basically I'm going to have two cameras now. So I'll have the Sony and I'll have a backup uh, GoPro in the front. That should get me through the entire race without losing any footage. That's not part of the helmet review. It's kind of a tangent, but I thought I'd throw it in there for those of you who are vloggers who are watching this. All right, so back to this helmet. Uh, great helmet. I highly recommend it. Uh, probably more so it's little brother, the 5.5 version 1.5. Uh, just because the price point on this thing is ridiculous. Um, it also comes with this really nice quality uh, bag to carry it in. Uh, very, very good padding. It's got this nice pocket here, right? You can put stuff in, obviously, a little name tag area. Um, and that's pretty much it uh, for the helmet. Uh, like I said, uh, very expensive helmet. Amazing helmet, amazing helmet, but very expensive. I wish I could uh, wish I could keep it. I hope you enjoyed the review and you guys learned some things. I know that there's probably a ton of different reviews out there to sell a lot of the same stuff, but some things that I might have added hopefully help, helped you out a little bit. I know one of the things that I was looking for that I couldn't find on other review sites was how sturdy is this visor hooked up here. I don't know what else other people might have questions about with this helmet. If I could afford to keep this helmet, I would keep this helmet. I'll probably be looking at getting the, the younger brother. But I'm doing my research just like you should be. And if you're watching this video, good on you for uh, doing your research. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you next time.